Constitutional Convention! This is how we do. Uncle Sam's not doing too- uh oh. The Articles of Confederation's killing Uncle Sam, they're too weak! The only prescription is... A Constitutional Convention! Which results in the creation of my all-time favorite book, the United States Constitution. He's back! You did it, Constitution! The Constitution sets up a stronger national government. The Articles of Confederation just weren't working, so people agreed we needed a Constitution. Well, actually, they were just supposed to revise the Articles. They weren't supposed to write an entire new government, but, you know, they did whatever they wanted, I guess. Seventy people were appointed from the 13 states to attend the Constitutional Convention. I mean, they couldn't all make it. Jefferson and John Adams were out of town overseas, and Hancock and Henry weren't vibing a stronger national government, so some people didn't show up. Okay, so there was actually 55 people that showed up from the 13 original states. Okay, technically only 12 states send people. Rhode Island was not interested in revising the Articles of Confederation. So not every famous person from the Revolutionary period shows up, but we got Ben Franklin, George Washington, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton. These are some heavy hitters. The father of the baby constitution is James Madison. James Madison spent a period of time, that I don't know the exact amount, studying the global governments over history, different civilizations, different countries, and found that they were all... <laughs> so these 55 individuals are going to spend about four months coming into an agreement about what this constitution should look like. They had to construct this bad boy from scratch. And 43 people are going to stick it out and be happy enough with the document to sign that they approve it. How could they get this done? What was the secret to their success? We gotta work it out. We gotta work it out. Like when you and your boo each decide what the toppings are going to be on your half of the pizza. But then you're like, wait a minute. Why does my pizza taste weird? Oh my gosh, did a pineapple jump over to my side and hide under the cheese? This is disgusting. Forget it, from now on we're getting two different pizzas. Because pineapple does not belong on a pizza. Sorry guys, I just went to a dark place. Totally scratched that pizza analogy, that was nonsense. Compromise was the key to the Constitutional Convention. Compromise number one, the Great Compromise. The populations vary between the states. Larger states like Virginia wanted representation in Congress to be based on the population, where smaller populated states like New Jersey wanted an equal representation in Congress per state. Imagine both states not wanting to give up any power. Hmm. Just when you think we've come to an all stop on this constitutional convention. We gotta work it out. We gotta work it out. The Great Compromise splits Congress into two houses. A bicameral legislature, a lawmaking body made up of two chambers or houses. The House of Representatives and the Senate. In the House of Representatives, the number of seats is going to be based on the state's population. But in the Senate, each state's going to have an equal number of seats. We gotta work it out. Compromise number two, the three-fifths compromise. In terms of congressional representation, a slave counts as three-fifths a person. So one white person is a person. The one black person is three-fifths of a person. Or it takes five black people to equal the power of three white people. Usually kids are saying, hey, this is wrong. They're not treating people right. It shouldn't take three votes to equal five votes. We're talking about slavery here. The slaves didn't have any votes. The slaves are treated like cattle, like property. Slavery is horrible. 
We're talking about states being allowed to count up their slaves for their population count so they can get more congressional representation. These slave states are gaining more power in the House of Representatives, the House of Congress, where power is determined by your state's population. There are some people against slavery at this time, but there's not enough of them for this to be a major issue yet. But you can really see the foreshadowing of the Civil War. Compromise number three, the Slave Importation Compromise. So they're trying to write a new government, and the South wants to protect slavery forever. The North isn't rely upon slavery, some people don't like it. So how do you make that work? We gotta work it out. The Constitution is going to state that Congress cannot ban the importation of slaves until 1808. So for a 30 year period, Congress cannot stop slaves from being brought into the country. It sure wasn't easy, but the Constitution is written, thanks to compromise. I don't know why you had to go make a Beatles song and then make everybody think about the slavery and all that horrible stuff. Well, you know something, Beatles? Tough. Alright guys, that is the video, Constitutional Convention. We learned that compromise was key, and a lot of horrible stuff got brushed under the rug, but that's the history, you can't run from it. We're going to get going. May all your compromises be wise, and may all your pizzas be pineapple -less. Have a good one.